And Jesus says, listen, woman. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Y'all know that ain't the way it went down. <laughs> Can you imagine? Woman, give me some tea in there. I tried that before. It don't work. <laughs> Trust me. It does not work. But if I say sugar pie, honey bunch, give me some tea, baby girl. She's like, oh, he's so crazy. <laughs> Whose house is he living in? <laughs> that is totally fabricated. I never. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where I've been. I'm just like, ah! so anyway, here's the thing. So he says, if you would have known who asked you to give you a drink, you would have asked, or who it is that is asking you to give you, you would have asked me for drink, and I would have given you living water. She's like, yes. well, hold up here. And so they go into this discourse, okay? And so by the end of the deal, Jesus says to the woman, because she says, I know Messiah is coming. When he comes, he's going to tell us all things, and, and so on and so forth. And Jesus says to the woman, I, that it, I that's me. I'm the guy that's coming. I'm the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Jesus very rarely, listen to me, very rarely come right out and told anybody, I'm the Messiah. That's right. Yes. Whew. But, but for some reason, listen to me carefully, for some reason he said it to this woman. Yes. Yeah. For some reason, Jesus said to this Samaritan woman, I am here. I'm your Messiah. I am, listen to me, I am your Messiah. I am your, get this, I am your Messiah. I that am speaking to you. I am your Messiah. She said, I know when Messiah comes, he's going to tell us all things. Just previously, Jesus said, hey, go call your husband. She says, I have no husband. He says, you're right. And you've had five. And said, the one that you're with now, you're not even married to. And that's what she's like. You know what's amazing to me? Is this woman didn't get offended. Yeah. Think about this. The woman didn't get offended. I mean, you know. Anybody with a past, you know, if I was to say, hey, listen, you know, if I, that's, you know, discern, obviously God knows everything about you. Right. Amen. Okay. And so nothing is hidden from Jesus. Nothing's hidden from Jesus. Nothing's hidden from him. He tells the woman, you've had five husbands. Now, most of us, somebody said that to us. I don't know who you think you are. We would automatically take offense It'd be like, you're judging me. Come on. Yeah. It would be like, oh, judging me. Oh, oh, are we judging me? Only God can judge me. You know, right. we've heard that, right? And so, but she doesn't. So you, you, you've got to, I, I've got to believe that there is something about the way Jesus said it that there was some kind of delivery with that it's just, a, it wasn't the, yeah, you had five husbands. And the one you're with now ain't your husband. See how that sounds? It had to have been from a plate. Because listen, Jesus knew her. He knows her. She knows what she's been through. She, he knows what she's done. It had to have been from a place of compassion. Not of judgment and condemnation, but of a place of compassion that says, I know you've had five husbands. Yeah. And I know the one you're with now is not your husband. Because if it would have been came from a place of anywhere else, she had to have sensed. First of all, it was amazing to her that he even talked to her. So that's one point. Yeah. See how G he, he comes into her life and he begins to talk with her. And so all of a sudden she's like, wait a second, there's something different. And so so she it opens her up a little bit. Y'all with me? Yeah. Opens her up a little bit. And she's like, okay, this this Jew guy, this is before he she you know she knew Messiah. 
So this, there's something different. This guy is talking to me, which is strange. But not only is he talking to me, he's talking about spiritual things. He's talking about, man, something's, something's different. You know, the Bible says that you can't come to the Father unless you're drawn. Yeah. Unless you're drawn. Unless there is some kind of uh, drawing from God, there's this some kind of I'm empty, there's this some kind of I'm a sinner, there's this some kind of I, I've got to change. Yeah. I need, there's, that's a drawing. Yeah. You start looking, you're, you start searching, you start asking, you start wondering, is this all there is? That is a drawing by God saying, come to me. All oh, you that are burdened and heavy laden, come to me yes. and you'll find rest. Hallelujah. Come to me. And so there's this drawing that happens. People that say, well, I'll get saved one of these days. No, you won't. Unless you are drawn, you cannot be saved. Yeah. Come on. To them that believe, he gave the power to become yeah. the sons of God. We were all enemies of the cross. We were all uh, aliens. We were all in darkness. Like Dave was saying this, uh, this morning. And, but we've been called out of darkness. And unless you're called out, in dark, out of darkness, you can't come out. It is not within us to do it on our own. It is not about head knowledge, Bible knowledge, or anything other, any other philosophy or mental uh, capabilities. Because those that come to him must be persuaded that he is him. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> he was drawing her. He drew her with his words. He drew her with his words. He drew her with his compassion. He drew her. Church, we need to learn the lesson of words. We need to learn the lesson of words. How we say what we say. Amen. What do we mean when we're saying it? How does it? How am I coming across to that sinner? How am I coming across to that one in darkness? Be a light. <laughs> Being salt, right, is not about exposing someone's sin. It's about exposing them to the love of God. Amen. Yeah. Y'all don't know how good that just was. Yeah. yeah. Being the light in the world, being a city set on a hill, is not about exposing people's sin. It is about exposing them to the light, Amen. to the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not about, man, you're doing this wrong. Look what you've done. You've done this, and you're, a, you're this, you're that. They already know it. Amen. Right? They already know. Because if they're being drawn, they are already aware of their sin. Yes. Yep. Amen. They're already aware of it if they're being drawn. Now, those that are being drawn, they defend their position. Yep. Whatever, you're judging me. <laughs> Come on, somebody. They defend. So see, if you're not being drawn, you're going to defend. Or, or you run. Yep. Come on, somebody. This is an amazing story. This is an amazing depiction of the love of God. This woman thought and was raised her whole life, her whole life, that this is how they think of me. Some of you have been raised your own. Some of you work really hard trying to be cool because you want to fit in. Because you don't want to be like that one person or that one kid in school. No, I'm going to be, yeah, man, you know, whatever. We work really hard at trying to find this acceptance and trying to find where we fit in. That's right, yeah. 
Because you know. You know how those people are. Well, you know how those people are. Even in church sometimes. It's like we come in and we work really hard to try to keep everything secret and just fit in. Yep. <clears throat> because what we're really doing is we're just looking for a place to belong. Yep. Those that are being drawn. Come on, somebody. Those that are being drawn, that's, that's the case. Those that aren't being drawn, they don't care. Whatever. But those that are being drawn, we as a church have got to come to the place where we realize that our light is not to expose. Our light is to grow. Yeah. Our light is to grow. Not to expose, but to, to grow. You know, and I know sometimes when you say that, when you talk about that, you know, this whole grace thing and all that stuff that's way out of balance uh, many times. This does not mean that you cannot be corrected. It does not mean that you cannot be talked to about something. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about that religious, you know, you're the, you know what I'm saying? You with me? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Jesus didn't have that. The woman caught in the act of adultery, the very act. The guys brought her to Jesus, these religious guys, right? Brought her to Jesus and said, she, we caught her in the very act. In the very act of adultery. You ever wonder, like, <clears throat> was you looking in the window? I mean, you know, what's going on there? You know? Right. I mean, you, you just kind of wonder. But it's like, you ain't caught her, and the law says, the law says, you know, and we as Christians sometimes use that sometimes, you know, in, in, the, in the exposure way. The Bible says, you know, kind of coming across like, oh, oh. I've arrived, you haven't. Let me show you where you went done wrong. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the law says she's supposed to be stoned. What say you, preacher? I would love to. Y'all remember what Robbie Mitchell was here and he said, I, I knew what you remember that. Yeah. I was like, hog, tell us. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you dog. You know, he had us. Jesus stooped down. Wrote in the in the ground, and he said, "You without sin cast the first stone." Wow, yeah. ha, right? And when they all left, from the youngest to the oldest, thanks out, you know, to the to the oldest, right? See, because people that have been set in their ways for a long time it takes them longer to figure it out. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Come on, somebody, yeah. think yeah. about that. Think about that. You know, some you know somebody's kind of you know. Oh yeah, man, you're right. Oh wow, never seen it that way before. Wow, I, you know, then old people are like, wait a minute here. <laughs> they're, they're older. I'm not. I'm not giving old people a hard time. I'm just saying, you get set in a certain that they were set in a certain way of thinking. This is how it is. This has to. This has got to be. Yeah. Yep. It took them the longest to put the rock down. Come on, somebody. Jesus, the woman. Raises her up and he says, where are your accusers? Where are the people that were ready to condemn you? He says, neither, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Yep. See, that's an important truth. Jesus never condemns us when we come to him and we're just broken and just a mess and just... I have failed. I, oh, I deserve this. I deserve that. I deserve this. I deserve that. Jesus never said, you're right, you do. <laughs> he says, I don't condemn you. And then he says, listen to what he says, go and sin no more. Don't continue living that life. Amen, yes. Begin to change. Begin to go a different direction. Come on, somebody. Amen. So that's my opening. Now I got it. Watch this. Jesus said, I who speak to you am he. Verse 27, here we go. It says, and at this point his disciples came. Now watch this. Listen to these words. Okay? Listen to me. Are we there? Okay? We're all at the well. We're all seeing the disciples come. Get this in your mind. Here they come. Here comes these 
Jewish guys. Come on, somebody. Here they come. Jesus has handpicked them. Here they come. Jesus at the well. He's talking to the woman. The Samaritan woman. They're dogs. They're worthless. They're terrible. They're defectors. They're, come on. Yep. Here come his people. Here comes his people. And the Bible says, it says, and at this point, so here they're in this conversation. I am he who speaks. She is just blown away. She's like, whoa. Can you imagine? You remember when you first just met Jesus? When you first just got, got that revelation of his love, his mercy, his compassion? You're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right? Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Right? And I, I got to believe that that's where she was. She's just, she is blown away. She's like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe that I was here at this time on this day. Here's the Messiah. He told me everything I did. He loves me anyway. Yes. Blown away, mind blown, right? And she is just beside herself emotionally, spiritually, mentally. She is trying to just wrap her mind around what just happened. Here comes the disciples. And the Bible says that they marveled that Jesus was talking to her. Yes. I gotta believe. I mean, to me, this is look, it looks like to me. That they come up, here's this Samaritan woman. Jesus is talking to her, having this conversation. May have even been some tears in her eyes. Come on, somebody. Amen. She is just like, oh my gosh, he's the Messiah. I can't believe it. Right? Here they come. And they marvel that he was even talking to her. Why is it so hard for church people to realize? That that is exactly what we are supposed to be doing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I don't want to talk to that person. I heard about them. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, don't be, I don't want to be seen with that person. You know how they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I don't want, you know, they're not, you know, I don't want nobody to think that I'm that way. Oh, it's getting quiet in the church this morning. Yeah. Ooh, that must mean that I'm starting to step on some toes, love. Ooh, starting to feel a little, oh, wow, pastor, be nice. Bam, be nice. I love doing that to you guys. Amen. <laughs> you know, it would, I would be, I'd be uh, falsely representing this if I didn't say it. And sometimes I got to battle through that too. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Listen to me. I'm not up here preaching at you. I'm talking to us. Yep. As believers. Why is it so hard for us to just get that? Why do we, why, why do we want to distance ourselves from, ooh, ooh. When Jesus says, go after him. Think about that. Think about that, church. Why is it that we want to distance ourselves from certain people in society, certain kinds of folk? Oh, no, no, nothing to do, no, 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 no. It's because we feel uncomfortable. You see, then we try to spiritualize it and say, oh, it just grieves my spirit. <laughs> you need to get over yourself. I need to get over myself. Blaze has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> He's like, all right, man, all right, man. Oh, there he is. Blaze is my buddy. <laughs> Almost every time he comes in, he comes running to me and he wants to hug me. Isn't that cool? That's cool, man. Sometimes I'm like, stop it, I'm getting a little busy. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Where was it? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> We spiritual. Thank you, baby. You are bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Oh, glory. Now watch. We. Really? After I just called Blaze out. Really? <laughs> but we do. We, we, we try to over spiritualize this stuff. It, it just drives me nuts. You know, listen to me. I'm not saying, man, I've been there. It's like, oh, you know, you know, all this stuff, whatever. But it's like, it, it just it just doesn't make sense, folks. It doesn't make sense. How can you, being a Christian, how can we, being Christian,
Christian, born again, spirit filled people say, say that oh, it just grieves me. I just can't, I just can't stand. It just grieves me. It just grieves me. Are you really going to tell me that Jesus, the Son of God, yeah. Emmanuel, God with us, full of the Holy Spirit, without measure, without measure, completely full, flowing over, running down to a hurting and broken world, purposely put himself amongst the people that nobody, else, everybody else was like, mm -hmm, I can't be seen with them people. Oh, I can't be around those people. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my spirit's grieved. Are you really telling me that you are as full as we think we are? Maybe the reason is because we are grieved. The reason we're so grieved by what we hear and what we see, amen, in a negative sense, is that we are not as full of God as we think we are, but we are more full of self-righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were indignant towards people. <laughs> Look at them. Look at them. Can you believe this? Can you believe that? But yet Jesus, the embodiment of God in the flesh, full of the Spirit of God without measure, went to those people. And never once do you see him going, oh, I just can't be around them no more. Oh, I just can't do it. It just grieves me. This is food for thought, folks. But the Pharisee, on the other hand, they couldn't stand to be around those people. They didn't even want to be seen with them people. So why do you think that is? Jesus called them empty tombs. Whitewashed, man. Self-righteous. Full of themselves and their traditions and what they say. I know this is heavy this morning. I know it is. I'm not preaching at you, I'm preaching for us. Yeah. Folks, we, if we're going to be, listen to me. You know, we hear a lot of people, oh man, end time, it's end time. Man, Jesus, oh, it's end time, it's end time. Is it really? Then if it is, then we need to get this right. Because I don't know about you, but I see lots of empty seats in this church, and I'm sure there's a lot more empty seats in other churches. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more people that aren't saved, don't know about the love of God and forgiveness and compassion and all those things. Amen. Yes. So what are we doing as a church to make sure that people know that? Amen. Yes. What are we really exposing people to? The love of God? Amen. Compassion? Hope? Forgiveness? Or exposure? I feel like I'm in a Presbyterian church. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh. <laughs> I figured somebody saying, hey, man, hey, man, brother, preach it. You, you can do that here if you, if you like. <laughs> it really encourages me because I feel like, man, I'm bombing up here. <laughs> Everybody's mad at me right now. <clears throat> Let's close in prayer. <laughs> You ain't getting all that easy. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Watch this. Y'all with me? Amen. See, I say that so I can find my place. Right. <laughs> yes, now watch this. It says, They came and they marveled and he talked to the woman, yet no one said anything to Jesus. You ever notice that? You ever notice that? Nobody will say anything to the guy doing it. But they'll say, okay. You see what pastor? You believe that? What, what do you think about 